ASM, hydrosynth. All right, so I've had the hydrosynth for a minute now, and man, there's a lot of stuff packed inside of it. And I wanted to do one of those top five feature type of videos for this thing. But as with most of those videos, it's really hard to choose just five. I honestly could have done five on the oscillators, five on the filter, five on the mixer, five on the five LFOs. Uh, yeah, I, tr I tried. So <laughs> there's a ton more than just five, but let's not waste any more time and just get into the five that I think are pretty up there. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so the five things that I really like about this, um, actually, you know what, real quick, check out this patch I made a while back. I I, don't, I forgot how cool it was, but uh, <laughs> this is the initialized patch, my bad. Check this out. Basically, I wanted it to start off really smooth and slowly go into chaos. Kind of like your mind without a cell phone. It's kind of nice at first, and then you start losing it. And I even added aftertouch for it, so watch, we'll let it go nuts, and then press it down. Even sounds really good in the lower octaves. Poly after touch. All right, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not at all what I wanted this video to be about. Uh, the five things I really like. I'm gonna go to an initialized patch. Number one, you get wave scan. This is a cool way to basically modulate uh, the 200 plus waveforms that you get. So I'm sure you already know this. There's a ton of wavetables in this thing, right? So if you change your mode to wave scan, this is where it's super cool. This now turns into the wave list edit. And out of those 200, you can choose which wavetables you want out of eight. And then you can modulate between these eight wavetables. And a helpful hint, this is something that uh, Loop Pop taught in his video, which is really, really good if you want to deep dive into this thing. But if you hold down shift, you can actually select the wavetables from this point on to all be from the same kind of family. So you can see these are a bunch of Horizon ones. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. So basically, let's listen to this now. So if I go back, exit. So wave scan, you can see we're on the first position, which again is this pulse six. So as I hold this note down, you can see the wave table changing between those eight positions. And sure enough, you can modulate this easy mod matrix, assign what I want LFO five to go where to the oscillators, what? Let's go to the oscillators, wave scan. So now if you go to LFO5, slow that down a little bit. Throw a little reverb on there and you're basically set. Okay, on to the second thing. It's another oscillator section type of um, feature. And honestly, it was, like I said earlier, it was so hard to pick five. I could have easily just done like five to six on just the oscillator section alone, but I 
thought this one definitely made the list. So check this out. We'll initialize the patch again. Um, I'll choose a pulse width. Uh, not mode. Where is that? There we are. So if I go to mutant, right, you got two mutant engines per oscillator for one and two and three just has a ring and noise modulator. But these mutants are really cool. And actually, you know what, let me just stick to a triangle. It'll make a little more sense. So if I go to mutant, these are ways that it'll affect the oscillator before it gets to the mixer. The routing here is really simple and it actually teaches you a lot about synthesis, which is really fun to kind of just dive around, especially with the screen. It really helps you kind of see what you're doing. So mutant one, right? I'm gonna go to mono mode, boom. Um, so back to the mutant, there's a couple different modes, but this PW pulse width ASM, I'm guessing is a Shun sound machines pulse width. If I turn up the dry wet, nothing, right? But you'll see this, it says custom edit. So if I hit that, I can now choose between eight positions in the single cycle of the wave shape to affect its pulse width modulation. And now you're probably thinking, well, dude, this is triangle. There's no pulse width there, but with the wave tables, it actually allows you to apply pulse width to all the wave shapes. And this includes all the really crazy ones like the E piano Oregon horizon stuff. So I'm just doing it to this one because it's way easier to see, but check this out within the eight positions of a wave table, I can add modulation or pulse width modulation. So look, it's an awesome way to just kind of like shape up your sounds. Kind of find where it rings nice. Okay, so keep your eye on this one. Warp six. Watch this. If I go to mod matrix, assign. What do I want to assign? Let's say LFO three to what? Uh, mutant one. Mutator. Then you also have, where is it at? Mutator, window, feedback, warp one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yes, you can modulate each independent warping position. So watch, I'll turn this up. So if we go back to Mutant 1 in our edit, you can see it right there. And this is for six. So within a wavetable with pulse width modulation, I'm modulating just a tiny segment of its modulation. <laughs> Throw this down. Do a little drive. Ooh. What's cool too is these waves kind of play on where this one's at. So if I move this one. And then again, mod matrix, what do I want to do? I want to assign uh, LFO4 to mutator one, and we'll say warp five. Then we'll go back here, edit number five. And then what do we have? LFO4, we'll slow that one down. So now looking at it. And then what's neat from here, you can go back to oscillator and change the wavetable. And it'll still apply all that stuff to it. Whoa, there it is. Go to amp, give us a little release. Maybe make it a little more plucky. Maybe speed this up a little bit. Cool. Yeah, that crazy, insane ASM pulse width modulation is perfect. All right, so on to number three of what I really like is on the effects, they have a lo-fi and a rotary style um, effects and you can apply this pre and post 
which is really cool. So I made this patch earlier, right before this video. Oh, let me go up an octave. So if I go into post effects, this is where I have my lo-fi. And then this is without it. Turning it up. Oh my God. This patch took me like five minutes to make. Designing stuff on this is so quick. You know what, let's modulate that. So mod matrix, let's send three to what effects, and we'll say dry wet. Man, it's so simple. There it is. Can lower this a little bit. And then the LFOs are polyphonic. So it shows up on certain notes and not others. Wait, which ones? LFO 3, yeah, it should be good. Man, this is so dope. Then let's take, uh, let's get weird. We'll go down a page, we'll say, I wanna assign LFO 2 to LFO 3's rate. Is LFO2 really slow? Yeah, it is. On Matrix. Oh, yeah, you can hear it there. Ooh. Okay, before I get carried away, um, yes, lo fi is one of the types of effects. And if I set this to dry, dry on the reverb, and there's no delay. I also got this rotary, and this rotary is really cool too. So if I hold this down, turn up the wet. It's super trippy. You basically have your high speed and low speed of how it kind of, it's almost like tremolo. I mean, if you know exactly what rotary does, um, leave it down below. I'd love to figure it out and learn. But the way I hear it now is basically you have a, how fast do you want the highs to be almost, you know, modulated as far as amplitude goes, and then your lows as well. Oh, it also sounds like it's doing some pitch, but that just might be me tripping. Listen how cool that sounds. So I like the lows moving a little bit, but not that much, but I wonder if I could do this. I want to assign... What do I want to assign? Um, let's see if I can set it. Is it an option? Okay, key tracking to its parameter two. What's, dang, is that what it is? Or is it those? Hopefully it's those, let's see. I think it's doing it. Damn, I wish I knew the last two notes. <laughs> I don't know. That's the one thing that kind of bugs me about this is it only says parameter one, parameter two. It doesn't actually say what effect that is, but if it's parameter one, parameter two, it's changing the rotary type and then changing its pre-effects rotary one. Um, I hope that's not the case. That'd be kind of weird, but maybe it's those two. But I was hoping to set the key tracking to move how quickly the low speed is going. But... Anyway, I just wanted to really show you the rotary effect as well as the lo-fi effect. Listen to that. You even have the filter cut off in here. How magical is this? Then 
And you also have uh, Lo-Fi 2, which I'm guessing is just a different algorithm. Filter type, we got a low path. Ooh. Man, I love how just smashed it sounds. Let's take the rotary off to just here. The lo fi. Back to lo fi one. Ooh, am I clipping? Oh, I'm not clipping on my recorder, but you can kind of hear the clippiness from here. It sounds good. Yep, those two effects. That's number three. I use them almost on every patch now. All right, let's go on to number four, which is this patch here called Unpredictable. And basically, in the mixer section, if you go down, you have... Um, I guess the best way to explain this is like the ratio of how much this oscillator is going to filter one versus filter two, because you have two filters, right? Oscillator two, how much to filter one, how much to filter two, oscillator three. You know what? Let's start with a initialized patch so you can really hear this. I want to set this to a pulse width. Oh, turn that off. Cool. So if I go to filter one, I can turn it down. Right? Filter two is a high pass. Right? So if I go to mixer, I can go down a page and say, how much is filter one skipping filter one and going to oscillator or filter two? So now if I select filter one and move this, it should technically have no effect, which is exactly what's happening. It's only affecting filter two. While I can high pass this really high, I can introduce a little bit of low pass. If we go back to filter one, now it's only filter one. So now you're probably like, well, what the hell, right? The low pass, there's no lows. Well, that's because in the mixer section, if I go down one more page, there's filter routing. And this can also be accessed within the filter menu, filter routing here. But what this means in series is it's going from filter one into filter two, which is totally doable, right? You can go from the mixer into filter one, down into filter two, into the amp, or what I like doing, parallel. So they go into it at the same time and they both get mixed before going into the amp. And this is where you can start introducing some really cool sounds. So again, We'll go to filter one, or filter two, oscillator one, filter two, right here, right? Now, if I go to filter one, I can start introducing some lows. But the crazy thing is this is on a per oscillator basis. So if I go up to the top, I'll turn up oscillator two, right? So without it, with it, filter one, turn it up. So I can say, filter two, only go, or Jesus, this is getting confusing. Oscillator two, only go to filter two. So I can turn down filter one, and we're left with that wave. Go to filter two. Maybe I can mix oscillator one a little bit. Let's go to voicing. I'll set this to mono. Let's get a little glide on there. Oh. Now, one of my favorite things to do is LFO ones by default map to the filters. So I'll say for our filter one, we'll turn up that amount. Oscillator, or LFO one, let's do random and rate really low, mono or single. So every time I hit it, it's at a different position. Right, we can do the same for filter two. So filter two, LFO, let's go negative and turn filter two way up. And 
And this is kind of how I built the unpredictable patch. Every time you hit it, it's different. What's even wilder is I can say, let's send. So actually, so I can explain what the hell I'm doing. You also got this morph, right? The morph amount here. Basically whether our filter two is gonna be low pass or high pass. And I wanna modulate that. So all I gotta do, hit mod matrix, assign LFO five to what? I'm gonna assign that to filter two's morph. There it is. So, and again, LFO five, rate all the way down, sample and hold, and set it to mono, and this will re-trigger a different position for its morph amount every time I hit the key. Even more unpredictability. Same with the reverb. Let's assign LFO5, which is moving morph, over to the reverbs. Eh, let's not do time. Let's do uh, dry wet. Why not? There it is. So it turns on like crazy once in a while. And then sometimes it'll just turn it off. So then to soften that, we can add another, let's see. Oh, there's no reverb on the end. I guess that makes sense. That would have been cool to have another reverb, but would that be too reverby? Is that a thing? I guess to soften it, I can say reverb. We'll just set it to 30% or whatever. Throw a little ARP on there. Oh, let's latch that bad boy. Turn off this gliding. Let's go to envelope two, little release. A little plucky. Man, this is dope. Just turn down this tempo. Let's do random. Can I do both filters at once? No, or wait, can I? I know that there's a way. There's got to be a way. Dang, there isn't. Drive up on filter two. Turn up oscillator three. Let's find a cool wave table for this one. Actually, while we're here, so this might sound cool and all, but if you want it to sound absolutely disastrous. Another weird feature that almost made this list just because it is so weird is key tracking per oscillator. This means as I go up, some notes will be like higher than they're actually meant to be. So listen. It almost sounds like chord mode, but you'll hit some ugly moments. Throw an ARP onto this. <laughs> but if you go into the mixer and tone that back, you can kind of introduce a little bit of nastiness. There it is. So you get the main tones out of it, but then some awful, weird shit happening in the background. Anyway, that's that weird mixer oscillator thing I wanted to mention. Oh, and I guess while we're at it, in that same mixer, you can also pan each oscillator. I wish you could pan the voices and actually have a visual representation of which voice is doing what, maybe here in the voicing menu. Um, again, this is all digital, so I'm sure they can possibly add a uh, firmware update to maybe help you pan the voices independently. But being able to pan the oscillators independently within here is definitely a step in the right direction. All right, so on to my final trick with this thing. Uh, I'll go back to a randomized or an initialized patch. It's the ability to delay your envelopes as well as delay your LFOs. ASM, thank you. This is something that's on my Oberheim expander specifically to the envelopes, and I 
love it. I use it all the time, especially because that doesn't have any effects. So you can use it to kind of make a fake um, delay, if you will. And what this really means is let's go to this wavetable. No, that's boring. All right, let's fatten this up. Let's do that. Pulse with ASM. Wet. Edit. Whoa. Dude, this is so cool because you're just designing your own wavetable on the unit. You don't have to do some weird clicky thing on a laptop or something. All right, let's get a little more release in there. Okay, you know what? This will be the easiest way to show this. Envelope 2, the one I have selected right now, is going to the amp. And when I press a pad, Envelope 2 opens up that amp. But you'll see here it says delay. This is a delay on when the cycle actually begins. And you can have up to 32 second delay, which is absolutely insane. But we'll stick to 512 milliseconds, which is half a second. So watch this. See that? Hit. Boom. It's late in, with some attack. So we'll apply this like this. I'll turn the filter down. Uh, filter one. Go to filter one, envelope one, two, filter one amount. Cool. Seems about right. Right? So then we can delay this. So watch this. There it is. Oh man, I love this. So let's say envelope one, which is here, will have it sustain really low. Envelope three will have it be one second. Envelope one, We'll have it be half a second and then envelope three we'll do a slow attack of let's say two seconds we'll bring the sustain down a decay of one second and then some release you even have bpm sync for the envelopes which is i don't even want to get into that i have no idea how the hell that would even work maybe that's for when it's cycling and you're free running it so cool envelope three is now one second envelope one's uh four seconds jesus half a second. So envelope three, I want to assign envelope three to the amplitude and it's going to go to the amplitude's level. Let's see if it's working. Okay, so what did I do wrong? Envelope three to the amp level and the amp level's at 64. That should be right, because envelope three is set to nine. Oh, is my attack really slow? Oh, I think I heard it. Yep, so it's there. So I just need a slower delay. 10 seconds. That, we don't have that kind of time. Let's do... Also, if you hold down shift... Sorry, I'm jumping around. Let's do four seconds. Come on, baby. There it is. All right. Now we're cooking with oil or butter. Whatever you prefer to cook with, I am judging. All right, so in the mod matrix, that's going a little too hard for my taste. So instead of going to the amp level, let's go to the filter cutoff. Where are you at? There it is. Let's go to, no, I hate that about this. It keeps assigning. It makes sense, but, ah, okay. Exit, exit. What wavetable are we on? Are we on this one? Yeah, why not? And then we'll say filter two. Filter one, envelope one amount. Not that much. It's all about subtlety, right?
But yeah, that's really it. The ability to delay the amp envelopes or just the envelopes in general is incredible. And same with the LFO. So if I send LFO one really fast, right? I can also delay how that comes in. So then you can also fade it. Let's do a little bit of longer fade. Even longer. Maybe even longer. Fade in. Let's do two seconds. There it is. Again, going in way too hard. So we'll say LFO1, we'll do mono, and we'll set it to sample and hold. This will be a nice way to add some subtle variation. A great thing about this too is the LFOs actually have a level um, adjust, adjustment on themselves, which is pretty unique. And then, so it's a little jumpy for your taste, you can smooth it out. Actually, let's set it back to poly. This will give us a lot of movement. I need some more release on this one. Anyway, but yeah, that's really it when it comes to this thing. Those are my five favorite things. You got the wave scan, that pulse with ASM mode with the whole eight segmented pulse width modulation, and then you can even modulate those. The effects, you got that lo-fi and the rotary, which I love using. Um, in the mixer section, all that oscillator stuff you got going on where you can pan, you can also set where they go filter-wise and what has priority, as well as changing the filter routing for the two filters that you have on here. Another random bonus is that oscillator key tracking thing, which is just, like, why? That is so insane. But the reason that that's even there is one of the reasons why I like this synth so much because of its crazy flexibility and just kind of forward thinking modulation. From there, you also got the uh, envelope delays and the LFO delays. I This thing is so much fun. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks for hanging out. I'm going to be kicking it on this for maybe a couple more minutes or so. But um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Catch you next week. And you already know the drill. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.